Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I'm your host, Pat Sun, and today we're going to be taking a look at r slash pro revenge, where a grieving husband destroyed multiple lives just to expose his cheating wife. Let's begin. Our first story is from Reddit user Kuda Shura Wuda. This takes place before smartphones were omnipresent. I had a friend, we'll call him Bob, that was suspicious of his wife's social circle. One of her closest friends had been caught cheating and tried to throw her under the bus as well. Bob had no proof, and things settled down for a while. Bob was an IT professional and very, very good with PCs and networks. Nearly a year later, Bob's wife is acting shady again after her high school reunion. He confides in me and we talked through some scenarios. He jokingly mentioned a keylogger. He finally asked me to just drop it, and most of all, don't tell anyone, not even your wife. A couple months pass, and I'm up early. 5.30, 6 a.m., getting ready for work. I get a Facebook Messenger notification and see that I've been sent a link from Bob, but it's a group chat. It's literally everyone we know, her family, his family, our friends, strangers, everyone. I didn't open it. It looked like a phishing link, even though it came from him, who's extremely cautious. A short while later, I get an email from Bob with some ominous, unsavory comments and the same link. It's a group email with the recipients open copied, his wife's work, her family, her friends, his family, other people I didn't know. I knew it was legitimate now, so I opened it. The link was to a hastily made website containing pictures and videos of his wife and another man. This wasn't a hidden camera footage, it was screenshots including video screen captures. Weeks worth of screenshots. He had captioned each item with snarky comments and colorful names for his wife and her lover. It was an embarrassing amount of evidence. Videos of her touching herself with her lover. Chat logs about how they can't wait to fuck again solo touching videos of her and him, tons of pictures and the straw that broke the camel's back, trash talking her husband to her lover, comments about how much bigger and better he was. Her efforts to stroke her lover's ego were especially hurtful. I dropped what I was doing and called him. He was drunk and combative. He had been up all night making the website and drowning in liquor. Not one good word to say about women in general. He was extremely emotional, but after some work I had convinced him to take the website down before it does irreparable damage to his marriage, their careers, and his children. As he's sobbing and logging in to remove the website, I hear loud yelling as she bursts into the room. A screaming match ensues, and there's nothing I can do to pull him back. Apparently, her mother or sister saw the page, blew up her phone until she woke up and answered. She saw the website and went on the offensive. The phone call drops after 30 seconds of her screaming, while Bob is calling her a 304, and I can't contact him again. The website was still up for the rest of the day, and he was kind enough to put a view counter on it. Hundreds of people watched her touching herself with a married former classmate. Bob had done his homework. He installed a keylogger that records the whole screen. When he was out, she would log into the PC and or Facebook and play with her boyfriend. Bob had found her lover, his family, his wife, his wife's family, his job, etc. All these people were included in the Facebook and email groups. I do not know what became of her lover and his marriage, but I do know what happened to Bob's life. His wife was desperate to make amends. She tried and offered everything. In the end, it was her comments about her lover and his prowess that were her undoing. Bob tried to take her back, even after all his friends and family had seen her naked and cheating. But he couldn't get over the comments about his manhood. Bob eventually left her, gained about a 100 pounds, and then finally moved as far away as possible and became a horrible human being. I have no idea what he's doing now, as he went scorched earth with most friendships and his family. She's gross, and has a face shaped like a bowling ball now. Line forms at the rear. TLDR, former friend sets a trap for his unsuspecting cheating wife. He then shares all the pictures and videos with her friends, family, employer, as well as the boyfriend's wife, family, and employer. Many lives ruined. You know, I would definitely say this is a good revenge story, but not so much pro-revenge. Getting blind drunk, losing your shit, burning your relationships to the ground, and then becoming a fat, bitter incel is not a pro-revenge move. Also, sharing intimate images and videos of someone, regardless if they are a cheating hoe, is very illegal. I'm surprised that Bob is not in prison, actually. Today's second story was posted by Reddit user Sir Shocks a lot. Sorry if this is long. Feel free to just read the lessons or whatever. I wrote this for me anyway. I broke up with my wife one year ago tomorrow. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday, Jess. The divorce was finalized March 11th. 
For anyone going through this or about to go through this, I just wanted to share my experience and the lessons I have learned. We were together for almost 10 years. March 14, 2014, Pi Day, we used to celebrate. She went to nursing school, became a nurse. Eventually, she wanted me to propose, so I did. We planned this Star Wars-themed wedding for May 2020. Well, that wedding never happened. COVID happened instead. We both worked in healthcare, and what a big pile of bullshit that whole year was. We got married anyway on paper. We could plan the wedding another year. Well, less than a month married, and she admitted that she was cheating on me with a PA she worked with. There were red flags that I ignored, or at least chose to trust her. Lesson 1. Don't ignore red flags. Ask questions, demand answers, trust your gut. Lesson 2. If they ask for an open relationship, they are telling you that you are either in one or about to be, regardless of your opinion on the matter. She was effusively apologetic. She wanted to change. She wanted to go to therapy. She wanted to fix the relationship. She offered complete access to all of her stuff related to the affair. It was all there. No trickle truth that I was aware of. From what I could tell online, this was the steps for reconciliation to happen. But if I told my family, what would they think of her? So I carried that burden, that pain, alone. Lesson 3. Do not protect your cheating spouse. Make sure you have people that can support you. It isn't your job to jump on their dropped grenade. We went to therapy and what a fucking waste of money that was. How much responsibility was I willing to take for Jess's cheating? That is what I was asked. Fucking zero. I settled on 40%, which was bullshit, and I just set it to move on. I should have never bent over for that bullshit. I think I was so desperate to make it work again, and so demoralized that I just turned into a doormat, never again. Lesson 4. Marriage counseling after cheating is a joke, and don't let anyone make you take any responsibility for another's actions. Things started to get back to normal. The trust slowly started to come back after about two years. I should have gone to therapy. I had it in my head that I didn't need it. I didn't do anything wrong. There was nothing wrong with me. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was deeply depressed and just going through the motions. Lesson 5. Get therapy even if you don't think you need it. Something deeply hurtful was done to you. It will leave a mark. Around year 3, we decided to stop marriage therapy as the therapist retired. At this point, and at the therapist's encouragement, we had started to mix finances to be closer together. Lesson 6. Do not mix finances. One joint account is probably okay, but keep your paychecks going into your own account. Get a prenup, even if you are poor, it is going to make divorce at least a bit easier. Definitely don't mix finances after they cheated. Right after we stopped going to therapy, I caught my wife in a stupid lie, which she immediately got strangely defensive about. All progress in the past three years was gone in a second. I decided to do some digging in accounts and messages I still had access to, and, what do you know, a message to a man about their relationship arrangement. I tell her we are done. She tells me she was going to break up with me at the end of our lease. Bullshit. I tell her she will hear from my lawyer. This was September 13, 2023. I read horror stories of divorces taking months, even years, and I couldn't believe it. I wanted to be done with her as soon as humanly possible. Lesson 7. Be patient. The legal process is slow, even without kids. Lesson 8. You are not divorcing the person you married. They are the enemy. Give no ground. Give no quarter. Save messages, record conversations, whatever is legal in your area, for you to keep records. Where we had spent at least six years communicating and cooperating very effectively, with both of us having little worry about whose money went where and who paid for what, suddenly she was very concerned with how much money I had and how much I owed her. To be clear, she made more than me. We split costs evenly. I had a savings account, which I alone contributed to, with a percentage of each paycheck. I had asked her to do the same for years, but she never did. She spent most of her money, I did not. So I had several large bank accounts which she suddenly felt entitled to. So from September until March, the next year, we argued through lawyers about who got what out of what account. We even managed to fight over retirement accounts. We both worked full-time. We both had our own 401k. It shouldn't have even been on the table. By the time it was done, there wasn't much left of any of my checking accounts, all gone to attorney fees. I had my savings of about $50,000 which I was grateful to my attorney for managing to keep out of her greedy, selfish hands. I had all of our joint accounts which I split and then paid her an additional $7,000 equalization payment. Lesson 9. Divorce costs a fortune, and when you get married, they literally own half your shit. Be prepared to lose half of it, regardless of right or wrong. The court doesn't care if she cheated. Actually, no one does. Life isn't fair. Since then I have been going to therapy and trying to get my life back to normal, I miss my dog, I even miss my wife. Besides the cheating, we had a good relationship. 
so I can't help but miss it. I have periods of time when I have energy and drive. I have long periods of despondency. I go through bouts where I'm sure I am a horrible man and was a horrible husband. Other times where I know I was wronged and that I did nothing wrong. It has been a struggle every day in some way. I just keep moving forward. I don't have a choice. Being a divorced man in your 30s is a very, very lonely experience. I have a really tough time being vulnerable around others. I don't even want to be around others when I feel vulnerable. I know this is a flaw of mine and I'm trying to not have it because I know it is killing me. I have people reaching out to me and I can't bear to reach back for fear of feeling weak. Lesson 10. Don't neglect your friendships when you are married. Sometimes they are more permanent than a marriage. Even if you can't get support from them, sometimes the distraction of them is appreciated. I wish I could share some hopeful wisdom or some profound way to heal through this. I have nothing. It is painful. It is lonely. If you are lucky, you are rid of a horrible person. If you are like me, you have lost your best friend and your best support. Either way, it sucks. I went on vacation for the first time. I went to Sweden where Jess and I had planned to go. I wish I could say it helped. It just made me miss her again. For her part, she seems to be happy with her new long distance, whatever she has going on. That is the public show she has going on. The truth is a mystery. Part of me hopes she is happy. Part of me wishes she mourned my absence. Another part wishes her life would crash and burn. Either way, it doesn't matter. It changes nothing. Something that shocked me is the silence from her family. They liked me. I thought they liked me. I was in their little family calendar they sent out. I've heard nothing from any of them. I'm an immigrant. All I have here in the US is my mum, dad, and brother. I had this huge other family through my wife. She had cousins and nieces and nephews, family Thanksgiving, family Christmas, all gone, like they never were. They owe me nothing, obviously, but their absence hurts like any other loss. I have no plans on dating again. I'm too emotionally closed off to get close to most people. Even if I wasn't, I certainly won't trust anyone again. I'd not be much of a companion to anyone. Good luck. Message me if you have questions. I'm not wise or knowledgeable, but maybe I can point you the right direction, or at least be sympathetic to your experience. OP, I am very impressed. This post of yours is pretty spot on. Seriously, infidelity, divorce, grief, recovery, all of it. But there is just one thing I heavily disagree with. Don't let this ruin your perception on life. You don't have to get married again. In fact, I am heavily against getting married in today's circumstances. But OP, live your life. Don't be bitter. Have fun. Travel. Fuck different pussies. Get a hobby. Make friends. Life is too precious for you to waste it being bitter on what a gross hoe did to you.